In this video, we're going to look at the effects of something called creep in engineering materials. Now, a good starting point for understanding creep is to look at results from a UTS test. And we've seen the graph on the right hand side previously. This is the stress strain graph for complex aluminium bronze. Now, although it's slightly obscured, what we have on the y axis is the stress in megapascals, and what we have on the x axis is the strain. And when we did UTS tests, we were able to use this graph to determine a number of things. First of all, we could determine the yield strength, which occurs around here, where elastic deformation becomes plastic deformation. And we're also able to determine the ultimate tensile strength of the material, which occurs up here where the material fails. So the material yields here and begins to plastically deform, but it fails here at the ultimate tensile stress level. Now here we have nice predictable results when we have gradual loading. So what we're doing is we're increasing the load on the test piece. As the load increases, we get elastic deformation. As the load increases further, we get plastic deformation. And once the load reaches the critical point, the material fails. But when we introduce the idea of creep, there's something else that we need to consider. And that's how long the force is being applied for. Now, if we were to look at the results from the UTS test in isolation, then we would expect that if we loaded a piece of material to say 200 megapascals here, and we held that piece of material at 200 megapascals, then we would expect the strain to remain at 0.18. And without considering the effects of creep, we might assume that we could hold it at that stress level for years and years without the material elongating any further. And we might also assume that if we were to stress the material to 500 megapascals, so somewhere up here, that although the material would plastically deform, it would remain at a strain level of 0.23, regardless of how long we held that piece of material under tension for. But if we refer to our creep graph on the left, then in actual fact that isn't the case, and time is a huge variable. In fact, the only thing that we can infer from our stress-strain graph is the instantaneous strain, and that's the strain at time zero. So yes, at 200 megapascals, the instantaneous strain is 0.18, and yes, at 500 megapascals, the instantaneous strain is 0.23, but until we consider how long that piece of material is going to be stressed for, we don't know the effects that that stress is going to have long term. Now, in actual fact, what happens is, very early on, we get something called primary creep. And what we're looking at here is how the strain or how the change in length varies with time. Now this graph here is just for representation. It would depend entirely on the material. But what we see happen first of all is the material begins to creep. So even under the same stress value, its strain is going to start increasing. It's going to start stretching more than expected. It's then going to move through secondary creep if the time of the applied stress increases. And finally, it's going to go through tertiary creep before it ruptures. So this time is going to be dependent on a number of things. It's going to be dependent on the initial stress and the initial strain. So let's use our example again of 200 megapascals, which is within the elastic limit of the material. The piece of material is going to be able to hold that stress for a lot longer before it eventually ruptures. This scale, in effect, would be lengthened. However, if we stress that piece of material to 500 megapascals, giving us an initial strain of 0.23, then we're already placing that piece of material under a much greater stress, and therefore, this time axis is going to be reduced. The initial strain is going to be higher, the time axis is going to be reduced, and the material will stretch and rupture in a much shorter period of time. The important thing to take away from this video is that although gradual loading and UTS tests are very useful, as engineers we do also need to consider other parameters such as the time that the loading is going to be applied for. A great example of this is when we place tension on bolts. Let's say we want to hold two components together and we're doing that using a bolt, but that bolt is going to be under tension. Now what we need to be careful of is that over time, those two components aren't going to gradually move apart from each other. 
or the tightness of the force holding those two pieces of material together or those two components together isn't going to reduce as a result of creep. Other examples might include the cables on lifts or the cables on cranes. We need to have an appreciation of creep in order to design these types of components.